Good evening. This meeting is being called to order at 7.01 p.m. on their seven. This meeting is being recorded for transcription purposes and the written minutes and attachments, if any, will serve as the official record of this meeting. On behalf of the virtual audience, we ask the public joining us in person to approach the podium in the event they would like to speak. They will need to announce their name and address prior to speaking. Additionally, we ask the audience to save any personal conversations for after the meeting as additional voices cause confusion for those who are attending virtually. Roll call. Fisher. Fisher has an excused absence. Crew. Here. Marzullo. Here. Family. Here. Engelman. Here. Spellman. Here. In the audience is Alternate Machido, um, Zoning Inspector Wilson, and is anyone virtual? Just the show. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Spellman is filling in for the absence. <clears throat> the zoning, um, the minutes were sent out to everyone and they're also before you. Do we have any changes to the minutes? Has anyone had a chance to, uh, chance to review them? Mm -hmm. All good? Yep. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Motion by uh, Cindy. Second. I wish you Yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Maybe we want to move um, over old business and, and bring the final site plan review, the new business for Rockbridge Estates to the front line so they don't have to wait the entire meeting. We can do that. We weren't going to spend a lot of time on the old business. We reviewed that last week, correct? Yeah, I, I think we the where we left it um, after the last meeting was um, actually, I, I yeah, the thought was say that we just wanted to leave Shame it on, yeah. with the verbiage that we had Correct. and move it forward with the next um, next group of um, right. adjustments. That's that's correct. Okay. So that's why I said I didn't think we were going to spend a lot of time. I just it was just a review oh, of what okay. we were going to do. My mistake. So yeah, I mean, I thought we were done. With we're last week. Maybe right. maybe just reviewing the uh, amended resolution that Marcus sent out just to make sure mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. words are correct. We can do that. Do you have that? I don't have that. Okay, we'll Not in front of me, no. You did.
Right. Um, he's trying to pull that up. Yeah. So, um, what? First, let me pull up the existing definition. So currently the um, automobile service station as it's currently in the resolution is a place where gasoline, kerosene or any other motor, motor fuel or lubricating oil or grease for operating motor vehicles is offered for sale to the public and deliveries are made directly into motor vehicles including greasing or oiling on the premises. A portion of the building may be used to, for repair to motor vehicles and in which there is no painting of cars or body or fender work done. And we're looking to basically split that out into two separate uh, definitions. The first of which would become automobile, automobile refueling and recharging station, a place where the primary purpose is for the sale or distribution of fuel or electricity for the powering primarily of non-commercial motor vehicles. An associated building may be used for retail sales. The second part of that would be a new definition for automobile, automotive repair and service, a place primarily engaged in the repair or maintenance of motor vehicles, trailers, and similar large mechanical equipment, including paint, body, and fender repairs, which is conducted within a completely enclosed building. One of the other things that we made uh, an adjustment to was actually where those were a um, permitted use, and we're moving the, or we're proposing moving the uh, permitted use from the, um, B1, B2 districts for the automobile um, repair and service into the I1 and I2 districts and the automobile refueling and recharging station into the uh, B1 and B2 districts. And so that's uh, what we discussed last month's meeting and the, uh, everyone had decided last month just to keep the definitions that we had worked on and to move it forward. Is there any further discussion on that tonight? Nope. Okay. Any comments from the public? Thank you. Okay. We will then move those definitions, uh, the proposed text amendment changes to the list. And when I talked to Marcus yesterday, I believe we we're looking at submitting or getting them prepared for November, December-ish. So we'll have them all together. Okay. Now we can move to a new business, which is the site plan review. Final site plan review for the Rock Ridge Estates. This is the development near um, Stony Hill and Mattingly. And we received our documents. <clears throat> Has the members had a chance to review the documents? Yes. Planning Commission also uh, met last night. And they approved. With modifications. With the um, uh, Cindy, which modifications did they? It's it's the rec well the recommendation. The same ones. It's the same ones. Yeah, just it's approved with modifications. Is what we voted. So there's a list. Does anyone have any questions? One of the concerns was the width of the street, and I noted that the street is now 22 feet. But that's not a problem. Um, I, the one question I do have is for sublot 18. Um, it looks like it's kind of a small building envelope. Is 
it, is it is it still large enough that you're going to be able to put a, a home and and keep all of the um, the setbacks? Is that yep, because you have a lot of um, storm management easement and um, conservation easement in that area. Uh, my name is uh, Kirsch Schmidt, and my address, or the address is 1310 Sharon Copley Road, Sharon Center, Ohio. Um, yeah, the, the, the house location is preliminary. It can be moved around just to make it fit better as needed. Okay. Since it's more of a box right now, and they haven't really finally, they don't have like a final footprint design to it, then they can adjust it accordingly. And then I guess for sublot 11, there's a lot of conservation and uh, wetlands there. Kind of a similar question. It's, it looks like it might be a tricky. Yeah, I think for that one, it's gonna have to be a smaller footprint, but they can still fit something on there. It's, a, it's more flat in the front of the lot where the, where the, uh, where the envelope's located now. So okay. I think they should be able to make, this shouldn't be an issue. So it's gonna be, network. but so ultimately the, the home will likely need to be like right up on the street then. At the setback line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And is there a fair amount of uh, wetlands that are going to have to be remediated for like driveways and, and the like? Or Not a lot. I mean, based on how much is on the site, I mean, we really minimized how much impact we're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. I think... Wetland impacts. Wetland impacts for the site are 0.275 acres. Okay. You know, overall, there's there's a lot a lot of wetlands that we're conserving and we're not yeah. touching. What about the existing buildings that were there? I <clears throat> there was an original building in the back of the house. And I believe that's all been demoed already. Has it been demoed? Is that correct? I didn't go back. So I didn't see it. Yeah, there's just that existing barn. That's been barn. That will be gone yeah, as well. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Very. I do. I did notice the mounding in, in that. So. Okay. Yeah, I think that the idea is similar to the uh, uh, project that they did on on a uh, 303 uh, Redwood Falls, just to do something similar with the mounting in the front. I mean, it looks fantastic from the street, you know? So I think that that's just the similar idea that they're trying to trying to do over there. So um, I attended the planning commission last night. Travis was there representing One of the things that um, was brought up was just kind of, because it's such a heavy wetland area, mm -hmm. the, drain, the drainage issues that may, result with between properties, whether within the development or on the perimeter. The question was, um, how was that going to be managed? Maybe through the HOA through some. With the, with the stormwater management basins, mm -hmm. is that written into the HOA docs? So that'll be, those basins will be maintained by the homeowners association. Okay. All right. And those docs are being written now, correct? They're not available. Or well, yeah, they we received them, but I think they are. You know, last I heard, they were being finalized. We're going to receive them in the next couple of days. Here. Yeah. Okay. So we don't have. Them. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions on the site plan? Concerns before we go through our list. Did we used to get copies of the HOA agreements? 
I'm not aware of us receiving any. I mean, in the past, I've not seen any. Tom, do you recall? Have we received the HOA? No, I'm, I'm saying in, in previous site plan reviews, didn't we have copies of the HOA documents? Uh, for conservation developments, maybe. Yeah, that could be it. Okay. Yep, J2. I know there was a neighbor that was concerned about the lighting. Um, I was going from the street A onto Stony Hill. I don't recall when I go by there how that lighting is, but I think you've changed your entrance to move it from the, from the neighbor that was across the street. As far as the Cobra light that's required, uh, I guess there's a there's a this, there's a requirement for right. a light in the mm -hmm. north northwest northeast or southeast corner. The um, headlights from the cars coming through shining in their window, but I think your entrance you moved it just so it's a bit it's not shining through that neighbor yeah from the from our original renditions we've shifted it south yeah okay. <clears throat> are you ready to go through this <clears throat> Okay, let's start with the beginning. These are the um, items that we are required to ensure um, that are fulfilled for the final site plan review. Accurate legal description prepared by or certified by a registered surveyor of the state. Yes. Property location map showing existing property lines, easements, utilities, and street right-of-ways. Yes. Final site plan prepared by a qualified professional and drawn to an appropriate scale. Yes. Use location and height of existing and proposed building and structures other than proposed units on two simple lots. Yes, so they, they removed the existing buildings except for that barn, which is going to be. <clears throat> location of all public right of ways, private streets, and common drives. Yes. Location and configuration of off street parking areas and loading areas, arrangement of internal and in and out traffic movement, including access roads and drives, and lane and other pavement markings to direct and control parking and circulation. Yes. Proposed and existing fences, walls, signs, and lighting. You did. I, I was wondering about the posts. I saw something that um, indicated posts, fence posts. Is that by a retaining area? Wooden, wooden guard posts. Is that? No. I, that's why I'm thinking it's by the culvert. Yeah, that's just a safety measure. Okay. It's, a, it's just a guardrail so that it just protects from that drop off that's where the culvert, where the culvert crosses are at. Okay. Underneath the road. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Okay. <clears throat> Location and layout of all proposed and existing outdoor storage areas, including storage of waste materials and location of tra trash receptacles. Yes. Sanitary sewers, water, and other utilities, including fire hydrants as required and proposed drainage and stormwater management. Yes. <clears throat> 
dimensions of all buildings, building spacing, setbacks, parking areas, drives, and walkways. Yes. A topographic survey of the proposed development area with contour lines at two foot intervals. Yes. Existing vegetation features, including large isolated trees, one foot or more in diameter, wooded areas, wetlands, and other environmental features. Yes. Proposed landscaping and screening plans, indicating preliminary description of the location and nature of existing and proposed vegetation, landscaping and screening elements, and any existing trees to be removed. Yes. Preliminary architectural plans for the proposed development or use, showing exterior elevations prepared by a professional engineer, architect, or surveyor, which shall contain their respective seal. Yes. <clears throat> a summary table showing total acres of the proposed development, number of acres devoted to each type of use, including streets and open space, number of dwelling units by type. Yes. For a phase development, propose schedule for completion of improvements that are designed to relate to, benefit, or to be used by the entire development. Such schedules shall be submitted with the first phase and shall relate completion of such improvements to completion of one or more phases of the development. This is not a phase development, so this is impenetrable. <clears throat> a road culvert. Permit was required by the Medina County Engineers Department. Yes. Our letter from the appropriate public agency stating that the proposed development for use conforms or will conform to applicable sanitary sewer, water, grading, surface draining, flood plan, flood plain, and wetland regulations if applicable. Yes. <clears throat> Absence, uh, the following items are for con conservation developments, which this is not a conservation development, so it's not applicable here. Other information to other information necessary for the evaluation of the final site plan as deemed necessary by the zoning inspector. In the case of subdivision review, the zoning commission review for zoning compliance only. Yes. <clears throat> so I just have a question. Existing um, oil wells, were there any, Tom? Yes, there, there were two, and they're noted on the plan. Okay, so there's two, not three. Is that right? There's three. Oh, they've three. Also, okay. They've, they've also been shown in the flat and the... Mm -hmm. All right. I just, okay. I saw two. I, it's like so crowded. <laughs> in review fees, the application will pay the fees set, um, as set by the trustees. <clears throat> Additional review criteria. Under subsection 11.8, the site plan shows a proper relationship exists between the thoroughfare, service roads, driveways, parking areas, and the requirements of Hinkley Township zoning resolution. Yes. The development will result in a harmonious grouping of buildings within the proposed development in relationship to existing and proposed uses on adjacent property. Yes. <clears throat> the development will preserve and be sensitive to the natural characteristics of the site in a manner that complies with the applicable regulations set forth in the Hinkley Township Zoning Resolution. Yes. All development features, including the principal buildings, open spaces, service roads, driveways, and parking areas, are so located and related as to minimize the possibility of any adverse effects upon an adjacent development. Yes. 
provide evidence that grading, surface drainage, and sediment control provisions comply with all applicable sections of the Medina County Engineering Code for subdivision development. Yes. Provide evidence that the design and construction standards of all private streets and any public improvements shall conform to the provisions of the Medina County Engineering Code for subdivision development. Maximum possible privacy for adjacent residential properties shall be provided through good design and use of the proper building materials and landscaping according to the requirements set forth in the Houston Township Zoning Resolution. <clears throat> the architectural design of buildings shall be developed with consideration given to the relationship of adjacent development in terms of building height, mass, texture, materials, lines, and patterns, and character. Building location and placement shall be developed with consideration given to minimizing removal of trees and change of topography. Yes. On-site circulation shall be designed to provide for adequate fire and police protection and safe and efficient pedestrian and vehicle particular circulation. And I understand that the fire and police have looked at the designs. So, so I just have a question. Tom, you had a question or you had a comment. Confirm new streetlight at intersection of Rock Ridge and Stony Hill. Is yeah, that our, our code calls for the developer put a street light at the intersection. And it's, that's, that's no, uh, uh, you know what? I'm sorry. I was thinking traffic light. I was thinking, how, oh. why would they put a traffic light there? But oh, on, yeah. street light. So yeah. Got you on the yeah. post. It's I got it. There. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yes. Roadway systems, service areas, parking areas, entrances, exits, and pedestrian walkways within the development are designed to have access to public streets in a manner that. Minimize traffic hazards or congestion. Yes. Good. Lighting shall be designed as to create neither a hazard nor a nuisance to adjacent properties and uses. And I think that uh, that's a yes, that's where they change the drive, which is <clears throat> in the street. Trash storage and other outdoor storage areas shall be screened from adjacent streets and property. The final site plan shall substantially conform to any preliminary site plan approved for the site. Yes. And oh, if the proposed, proposed development is to be carried out in phases, each phase is adequate provision. This is not um, a development that is going to be phased in. So this is not applicable. Are there any comments? Uh, just a, a comment and a question. So with regards to uh, trying to keep things rural and preserve, um, I think important items on the land, such as the wetlands, done a fair job of, uh, I'd say, working around them. And that's great. Um, as people move in and start uh, putting in yards and things like that, uh, it's funny how those things uh, tend to disappear. So I'm just curious, uh, within the language uh, for the HOA, what provisions have been put in place to ensure uh, a perpetual uh, protection of those wetlands? Yeah, well, Hinkley has Hinkley setbacks on oh, Hinkley has <clears throat> setbacks on the the uh, wetlands and the uh, streams. There's a, a, a 25 foot grading setback and a 35 foot building setback. And also, as part of this project, we're putting in a, a conservation easement that'll be it'll be it'll be monitored by an a, a third party. So third party every year, or as complaints come in. So these areas, these conservation easements that are going to be in the plat, you can't put grass clippings, you can't put a shed, you can't grade in them, you can't do anything in those conservation areas. How's that communicated to uh, homeowners? It's in the docs. So if there's a complaint, then the third party comes out, they take pictures, then they talk to that homeowner that they have to make any necessary adjustments or remove anything from that conservation easement. This is provided up. Yeah, and then um, we'll, our, we'll actually put markers, placards around these 
conservation easement areas. Okay. Redwood Falls has the same type of thing. There's like the, what are they? they they're sort of like, I think they're almost like stakes in the ground that say conservation easement. You can't, you know, stay pretty much stay out of this area. So but I guess maybe following your question, is that language going to be included in the HOA? I think maybe that, that was the I question. Have, and I will send those to Tom. Right. Um, and then he can prepare them for you guys. Well, we already have them all drafted. So okay. you'll see that. Right. And that was pretty specific yes. language from the Army Corps of Engineers. Correct. Mm -hmm. so. Correct. Thank you. Any other comments, concerns? We have a motion to approve the final site plan. So moved. Second. Approved? Yes. Arzulo? Yes. Engelman? Yes. Hanley? Yes. Selman? Yes. I mean, yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Great. Yeah, if, I mean, you guys are free to leave. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to stick around unless you're really fascinated by it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for your time. Nuisances prohibited. And the text says the authorization of any use herein does not authorize its use in a manner that is noxious, dangerous, or offensive by reason of odor, dust, smoke, noise, fumes, or vibrations. How I'm not sure how we want to work on this. What are we talking? Just ask first. Does anyone want to change this? I was going to say, well, what are we trying to accomplish? I mean, I know people have complained about noise, which for 40 years people have complained about noise, and we all come to the same conclusion. How do you define it? And you have to have all the equipment, all the other things, not getting into it. But what would we be trying to? I think I, one of the um, concerns is, does this definition meet our needs today? I believe that's where we're at. Well, once we would do that, at the same time, how do we enforce it? Again, we go into the lighting issue and we excessive lighting. 
excessive noise, et cetera, how do you enforce it? I mean, it's nice to have all these things, but other than wasting printer's ink, what's the point? Do we have the authority to enforce things like that? Like yeah, the noise, but, uh, that had to go all the way to the trustees years ago. We all did, but- And then yeah. it got pulled away. Right. But Lighting. again, we got into all that stuff with, you had to have this kind of equipment and somebody had to be certified right. to understand it. Same thing with lighting, uh, all that kind of stuff and kind of laid out there in the, in the weeds somewhere. I think the lighting, we probably have a little bit more- Control, I, I would have, sure. It's terms a of, little easier, I would agree. Yeah, noxious, noxious. Yeah, that's just my question, not that we shouldn't be looking at this. I was just trying yeah, to right. figure and out. Because we're making all these text amendments, and this okay. is the next one to look at to see okay. um, where we're at with it. Um, does it meet our needs today, I guess? Um, I, honestly, if, I, if I'm looking at this definition, I think it meets our needs. Um, what I don't think we have is any ability to enforce, which um, well, both gentlemen just kind of alluded to. But even beyond that, um, I don't know how much of this <clears throat> even the police can enforce. The, the danger? Yeah, I, I could see that. Um, odor, dust, all of that, like, I, I don't know how outside of continually filing complaints and then eventually going a civil route, there's, we, we, we as a zoning commission, we're, we can't be the neighbor police and make sure people are being good neighbors. Um, I think that's what we hope people are going to do, but obviously there are some that aren't. And I, I genuinely don't know what we can do. So if we look at the types of uses that typically would cause uh, things to fall under this category, I believe a number of those are conditionally approved uh, types of uses within a township. And, and that's an area that we can control in terms of when the conditions are um, written up and, and approved um, you know, by the appropriate, uh, what is it, BZA. So it's things like that that they could factor in. Um, I only, what, noise would be one of them. But I'm not sure I, the conditions. But, but I even, even so. still, I mean, we're realistically right now, we're talking about existing scenarios mm -hmm. that if we do change the language won't really affect the existing scenarios right um but beyond that like if once it's conditionally approved and they say okay well it's conditionally approved as long as you stop playing music at 11 mm -hmm. and they play music at 11 15 do we revoke their certificate no, they're already established and it's going to, they're, they're, so, I mean, I, I honestly believe this is something that is, it, it, that the only way that this, these nuisances are going to be enforced is if there are actual resolutions through the township, not zoning resolutions, Yeah. actual ordinances that the, that the trustees are saying, Hey, you know what? No, this, this stuff does need to stop. Agreed. Agreed. Take take the dialogue from from old business, and you talk about service stations and automobile repair and painting and things like that. Even in an enclosed building, I, I think the EPA governs a lot of mm -hmm. things with you know fumes and and uh, you know air quality and things like that. Right. Um, what else can we do there other than we can say we'd love it to be in harm you know in a harmonious fashion, no odor. Uh, but if odors start coming out of a, a place that produces, uh, you know, is, is doing painting or, you know, something like that. And, and they're within legal limits. There's literally nothing we can do. Much the same way, you know, when, when we were looking at the, um, the development up on West 130th and 303, and we were worried about stormwater runoff, and there were quite a few citizens that were very concerned about it. 
And the only thing we could hold the developer to was this mathematical model proves that it will handle the additional runoff. We we can't say, yeah, that well, your model's incorrect. You're right. Right. It's 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 created and verified by people that have studied it in depth. Yeah. Right. And we we can only hold them to what we're legally allowed to hold them to. And apparently the models were right after the storms the last couple of weeks. It seems yeah. to come yeah. summer. <laughs> the whole summer, right? <laughs> I don't know if we wanted more discussion before we go to the public. I mean, I, I, the only thing, I, the only other thing I would add is when you look at it, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. It's a guideline. It's saying please, right. right? But there's not much, not much meat to it. My only other comment is: are there, are there wishes that we would have in that section that don't exist? Yes. Please don't also do this other thing that just, you know, is it a nuisance to to. Uh, clear your land of all trees. Please don't do that. That's a no. I'm just being no, and that's a pet peeve, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, right, exactly. I mean, it's a pet peeve, but yeah, well, how could you know? I'm not sure. I would. Well, one comment I'd like to make just a little on before we get into public session is, I really would. I don't know if it's possible that we could have a requirement that the homeowners association document be presented to Tom or the zoning board just to, for a quickly review. I get, I know we can't tell them what should be in it, but having been through this, not only in my own homeowners association, people complaining, they never got this and all that sort of thing, but hearing it from dozens and dozens of people and other homeowners in the course of my experience with the township, or at least we could have something here and have a second thing, hey, this is okay, but what about? But I, can't, I grant, I don't think we're strong enough that we can say, no, you can't do that, you have to do this, but rather we're just having it reviewed ahead of time. I, well, I mean, we we do have that for the conservation development, right. as Cindy right. pointed out, so well, I mean, why, I don't- Why not? Like, could we apply the it to just the situation all that we just approved? We used I'm to. sitting here looking, yeah, I know. We, no, well, original thing was, uh, the township lawyer was going to put all this stuff together and he started the outline as many years ago and then it just died. I swear, like when I first came on, we would we would be in receipt even for a regular development, be in receipt of a, of a picture. Well, I know there were from time to time that we'd get them. I, I know. And maybe that, that's just out of goodwill. And many times it was the rough outline that was changed 16 times before the, <laughs> you know, before the final was filed with, with, the, with the county. But the, the it's just a thought. That... Okay. I think it's a good idea for us to ask for them with the final site plan. Yeah, I do. I think that's a great idea. And again, they What's say, the no, we're not changing this. You know, that's the way it is. Just, I don't know. Do you feel confident you, you, enough to look at like, this makes sense or so doesn't many make sense? Developments. I mean, do they, would that slow down the process for the developer? To... To be involved with to have the HOA documents available prior to the final site plan review. And you take a look at it, just kind of curse no, over. I don't think that's a, I've heard it's just uh, it's just timing for them, getting it going earlier rather than yeah. Okay. So maybe we should note that as something to something change. to consider for the next but just yeah, just uh, again. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sitting here listening to this guy thinking, okay, they're going to bring a third party in. Reactively. Keep an eye, like who and how and what and why, you know. And I, I grant you, you can't say, hey, you have to do it this way. But but you know what? If they if they were to say, hey, we're going to bring a third party in, and then when they actually go to start building and that piece isn't in there, we could say, whoa, 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 that's a pretty substantial difference from what you presented at the final site plan review. Yeah. Right. Well, I, I think you're onto something. The third party conservation people are talking about, we've worked with them and uh, probably the same group. And I know in Skyland, we had people mowing into the uh, <laughs> already into conservation and putting the garden in and so forth. And I simply called down to Davey and they said, we'll take care of it. And they took, they took 
really good care of it. I mean, we didn't even have to police it. In fact, they told us, don't police it. It's our job. And they yeah, came in and did a tremendous job. Oh, good. That's good to know. That's good to know. Anyhow, I, I, rest. I just want to make a comment. Any any comments on the nuisance, Cindy? I, I think I'm, you know, really in agreement with everybody else. I mean, I didn't it, didn't this come up because of uh, the talk of all the stuff down the road at the yeah. It, it was, well, I don't know about here. It was discussed, but I know over PCA we it was it was here as well. And we ran into exactly what he said that you know. You, you can't do that. They've already had the permission to do that through your, but, but you could, you just stay after them and get it fixed and uh, the law department. Remember, zone, zoning enforcement I'm doesn't win votes. The public, um, just to comment, if anyone would like to speak um, regarding the uh, section 4.8 nuisance is prohibited. Please come to the podium and state your name and address. Lisa Rushworth, 1006 Bellis Road. Um, before we talk about the, the prohibitive nuisances, we also had asked for a clarification on a statement that was made in the last zoning commission meeting uh, regarding zoning only regulating primary uses and not into not actually having anything over uh, secondary or ancillary uses. It is do we understand that right, or is no one here really? It was something that Marcus had said, and he's not here, so I don't know that. I think it was referencing the electric. That was what he was speaking of it in reference to, but I mean, it just kind of it. It seemed odd to me because I mean, if I could have a restaurant that has a charging station, couldn't I have a restaurant with an amphitheater that's a secondary use? Because hey, it's free, so it's not part of my you know my income, or you know it, it's a restaurant with a drag show and that's free and only takes up twenty square feet of the room. You know, it, it's clearly not a, a primary use. It, it just seemed kind of odd, and, and I wasn't sure if that was part of like ORC where townships are actually are not allowed to regulate secondary uses, ancillary uses. Mm -hmm. Or if that was something specific to the way our zoning code was written. I don't think that had anything to do with nuisances, but no, no, I said before oh, I speak to nuisances. She, she, it, it was she was going back to last week's meeting. Last when week. when we're we're and and I, I now that you brought it up, I, I remember some of the conversation, not all of it. Um, but we were discussing whether or not a restaurant could put in a charging station because the primary purpose of that building is actually to, you know, have, have um, people come and eat, but have a charging so that it's, it's an added benefit to provide to some, someone to come over. Um, and it, it could also be something that, hey, you know what, if you are a restaurant and you want to put in a charging station, you have to file a permit to put in that charging station at your location. Uh, I mean, I, I think to, to say that we can't control ancillary or secondary uses, I think it is, is, a, is a bit of an overstatement, a um, bit, bit of a simplification, because really we can. Um, if someone wants to have an ancillary use on their location, but it is clearly not permitted in that area, well, then it's not going to happen. Okay. And, and that was what we wanted to clarify because yeah. the way that it had been spoken at the meeting sounded like, you know, you're, you're not allowed to have outdoor recreation, but my baseball field is free and it's, you know, uh, it, it's not a tennis court, it's a pickleball court. So it didn't take up much space or something that, you know, I could make a sales pitch to how mm -hmm. it's clearly not a primary use and therefore it's allowed. But what you're saying is even if it's an ancillary use, if it is disallowed. So if I said no charging stations and the restaurant wanted a charging station because this zone <laughs> says no charging stations, they can't. I, I, that's, that is how I would understand it. Okay. If, it, if it's not per permitted in that zone, you can't put it in there just because, well, I'm already here doing something I am allowed to do. Yeah, and like I said, we wanted to clarify it because it, it sounded the exact opposite of that, which was kind of a scary, you know, parade of horrors going on. Um, but so uh, about the prohibitive nuisances, there were a couple of things that we thought would be good to add into um, the, the text that's there. And the one would be, you know, projectiles or 
you know any particle larger than dust you, you specifically say you know dust is disallowed um I, I think it's you know obviously dust could be dangerous it could be hazardous to my health i don't want to go breathing it either um but you know larger particles can be dangerous too and uh you know if, if you're hearing somebody saying that we should add projectiles in the zoning resolution as a forbidden nuisance you might think you know seriously who's launching projectiles at their neighbors and kind of laugh that off and, and i would have too until you know we moved to hinkley and encountered buzzard cove you know, I, I would have thought somebody that, that, you know, my kid hit a ball into your yard or, you know, my patron hits a ball into your car and you would respond with, you know, apologies and attempts to make it right. Um, but they they seem like they enjoy antagonizing pe people in the neighborhood almost, you know. We complain about the music and they start turning it on during morning prep. We, turn, we complain about, you know, somebody complains about the lighting and they add, you know, more lighting and shining it out into the street. You know, they're, they're winging golf balls into people's property all the time. And, you know, they're, they're protected by some of the Ohio law where, you know, oh, well, it's an accident. I, I don't know that a thousand golf balls is really an accident. We've got easily a dozen, too, from our property across the street. Um, and it just, to, to me, I don't see anybody who's going to be able to defend, I you know, it, it, so you could have language that there's obviously accidents. It, to me, a nuisance is, is repetitive. That, you know, my kid hit a tennis racket into a ball and it hit in your yard once. You know, that that's obviously not a nuisance. You know, I, I had something go wrong once. But, you know, the 50th time it happens this month and nobody's taken any kind of action to try to remediate it. Um, you know, that, that seems like it would rise to the classification of a nuisance. Um, the other thing that we would like people, in, and you had mentioned lighting, um, my understanding of the history of the restriction uh, on solar installations is that a neighbor wasn't happy with the reflection from a neighbor's solar installation. And every time I walk down my driveway after dark, I'm really astonished that we have regulations around solar installations to avoid reflected light, but we don't have any limit around direct lighting. I can see that reflected light would be annoying and possibly dangerous, but having huge commercial lights pointed directly at our driveway is not less annoying and it's absolutely dangerous. Uh, I can walk fairly well without seeing where I'm going, but driving without visibility is not safe. And there's no reasonable business purpose for illuminating my yard and driveway. Um, and then we did, we actually found the same kind of thing about the noise, uh, the ORC 505172. We were curious if the inclusion of noise in here is kind of pursuant to the, you know, the 505172 right for townships to regulate noise, or if it was kind of a more general thing, maybe, you know, just general health and safety. Um, because under like the 505172, there are other examples where it, it's um, it's much more specific and it doesn't involve measuring equipment. It, it's that it can be heard at so many feet, you know, by, you know, your regular facilities. You didn't have, you know, a stethoscope on or anything. Uh, and like Montville had an example of a resolution that their trustees had passed uh, that, that does go into specifically, you know, it, it allows... The ORC allows regulation over residential properties and uh, business properties with Class D liquor licenses. You know, at 50 feet, I can hear it. You know, it's clearly audible. Not, you know, not that I can make out every nuanced sound, and it, it you know, I, I could tell you every word that they sang. But you know, I'm standing here and I'm hearing it. That was enough to be considered uh, a, under their noise control resolution. Um, but I wasn't sure if that was something that the trustees would do, or if that was something that y'all would be able to include in the in the zoning resolution. Well, in terms of noise, that's that's governed under a different section of, of ORC outside of what uh, enables township uh, zoning commissions. So it, falls, it falls outside. Of yeah, no, that's what I said. I wasn't sure if the, the 505-172, so that, that is not something that you would have any purview over. Okay. This board can control right. from a township perspective, from a trustee perspective. Right, and that, that's what Montfeld did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but next, I, I wasn't sure because we saw noise in here if that was included because of the of this specific ORC or if it was included just as a general you know health and safety zoning can do health and safety stuff. Yes. Okay. And, and I think one of the things that I, I was kind of circling when I was speaking before, but from what you're what you're saying now, it's kind of giving me a little more clarity. Um, the police do not enforce zoning. Mr. Wilson does. Well, and and so when when you're having an issue with zoning, Mr. Wilson can go out and check it during normal business hours, this, that, and the other. But 
we really can't enforce it. And we, we can say, okay, you're being a nuisance, please stop. What, what, you, what your specific complaints are, are civil complaints. So the one question and that we so had, realistically, sorry. what the, the only remediation that I can see, and, and unfortunately it's us passing the buck, is the trustees getting the resolutions that say, these things are not okay, putting in ordinances, and here you go. The police can actually enforce these. So one of the questions, the kind of a curiosity, there's a zoning schedule of fees, yes? There's a zoning schedule of fees, like fines, like I've, I've, you know, put my pool on the property line and you can come out and write, there's like a cross-reference pool on property line, $300, whatever, right? No, we don't have anything like that. Our, our fees are strictly for building. Okay, so there's never any fine for violating any of the zoning? I'm just asking, because if I build my 700 foot tower, you're not going to find me. No, we're going to tell you to tear it down. Okay, so they're they're literally because I, so I, maybe our misconception. But I think we're talking about two different things. You're talking about nuisance, and then you're talking about zoning. Well, I, I am talking about zoning in general as a question. So, it so might, but there's 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 okay. something there's something substantially different between a seven hundred foot tower and something that is occurring <laughs> at somewhat regular intervals, but, fair but not persistent. Yes, so but because it isn't persistent. We can't really go out and say, all right, take away their business license. I saw a ball come in here. And I guess we're, we're, we might have had a misconception is I, because there is supposed to be a zoning schedule of fines, uh, I, I assumed that violating 4.8 meant you got fined 50 bucks or you know 200 or whatever. It was like up to 500. So they're supposed to be. That yeah. was my understanding. Well, in the ORC, they mentioned that there should be like, should it's a public record that you can get. What's that? It's a public record that you can request. I mean, I guess, yeah, maybe you don't have to have it one. And is a public record? It, well, it, it is a public record that one can request of a of a municipality. You know, yeah, but we're not a municipality. What? Wrong word. Of a township. So, but you're referring to the ORC, which I have a revised code. And you're saying in there is a schedule of fines? That are no, I, I'm saying that as a person making a public record request, one of the records that a township may maintain in their zoning office is a schedule of fines. Okay. It, so far, so good. All right. I'll accept that. Okay. It doesn't mean they have to have one. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. So we had a misconception that the fact that it was a thing that you could request as a public record meant that there was one. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, because I could request a unicorn license too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, so it's a unicorn license, I guess. Is, is it, so what, what our understanding was that if you had a prohibition on, you know, think things larger than dust, um, that the fact that somebody got a thousand golf balls in their yard could be a thousand twenty dollar fines, which would create a business incentive to create a safer environment. I don't believe townships can pass ordinances to create fines. Well, they can't be ordinances, they have to be resolutions. Yeah, it has to be a resolution where a village or a city can um, pass an ordinance for a fine. But I don't believe, and uh, I'll check on that, but I don't believe the townships do that. Okay. And, and like I said, it may just, it was kind of our, we made an assumption that I guess is, is invalid. We had the assumption that anything that you violate in the zoning would have, I mean, that's how most laws I've ever encountered work, right? You know, there's a law and if you do it, X happens, you know, 30 days in jail or 500 up to $500 or whatever. So we had the expectation that putting something into the nuisances would put it into the categorization of something that somebody could be fined for. And I may like my light shining out on the road, but I don't like it $50 a day. You know, and like you're saying, I, I get something transient, but you know, a light that's shining out here every night, if you show up at, you know, around now, you'll see it. Um, but if, I guess it kind of makes more sense about where you're saying we can't enforce this this re this nuisance is prohibited because there's no fine associated with it. We can just say shame on you, you violated it. Well, it's not a law; it's a resolution. Yeah, and, and see the difference is that happens that you you complain if there's that the golf ball is there and a cop comes over and says I didn't see it come in here and he's not going to stay there all day till you get lucky that day. But fair enough. But again, and he has to. The police have to witness these things. Okay. But again, the light that's shining into my driveway that blinds me when I take okay. my trash out is there probably right now. Well, man, re recalling 
like issues we had with Kobach Fields at that time, police took the position as we're not qualified whether this is excessive or not. So again, that's why I don't want regulations on here that can't be enforced because it's just, you know, we don't need more printer's ink spent. <laughs> Just for clarification, uh, the golf range down there put up additional uh, screens, and we haven't had a call uh, since they have gone up. So screens for along the edge. Yeah, it was up. It was up about fifty or sixty feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, higher. <laughs> I, Doug Meanser at uh, seventeen twenty seven Hinkley Hills Road. Um, Wilson, you're talking about the situation that uh, we talked to you several times about. Um, there's no indication and correlation between the phone calls and incidences as far as what they've done to try to eliminate that. So we have specific records that year to date, as of September 2nd, there's 658 of them that has come over. We average about 1,100 of them a year. So we haven't been paid for three years on damages. So your recollection or your interpretation of no phone calls, since we're spending money to repair the damages, we purposely don't put vehicles, equipment, whatever damages that incurs in the past, we park across the street at the neighbor. So for the record, I don't want that entered into the record that just because you haven't gotten phone calls that the incidences are not happening. So that's why we came to the meeting to try to understand the, the, the added verbiage of nuisances. What I'm gathering here to, tonight is that um, whatever, you don't wanna print paper, you don't wanna put ink on paper, whatever that explanation is, I'm not quite sure, but from what I understand, the zoning isn't an entity, even though you've read, what, five or six nuisances, I'm not quite sure why you even have nuisances on there or you're particularly concerned about them. Because if you can't do anything about it, I, I suppose that needs to go to a, the, 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 as you mentioned, the trustees to further that and find out why we even have the nuisances on the zoning part of it, if we can't do anything about it. So um, that's what I don't quite understand. And the next thing would be the, um, um, the um, I lost my train of thought here. Um, as far as, you know, the, the policing of it. So moving on to ordinances, if it's, if it's an ordinance, no other, no other township, no other community has a problem, um, you know, with the discussion of implementing violations. I mean, for the most part, violations are implemented and policed by the local law enforcement. So I'm not sure what that confusion is. You keep saying who would we, who would we hire to do it? What kind of of equipment? What we what we would need? I don't think other communities have that problem of trying to figure out how to how to regulate it and and enforce it it's a simple fact that the enforcement is through the local police force that a community has period i don't know why we're getting on 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 the fact that we need to you know try to come up with some you know extraordinary way to try to implement or police it i should say so um so that's my comment on 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 that. Uh, so that, I appreciate uh, that because we uh, the golf course we had them put up additional nets. I'm not sure if you 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 had them put them up. Yeah. Okay. They, they volunteered to do it actually. Yeah. 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 When was that? Um... Well, it was about a year ago, and that's what surprised me because I haven't heard a thing until tonight that the Doug's still getting golf balls in. Oh yeah, it's September second, we got 658 of them. Last year we had eleven hundred two in one day. Yeah, <laughs> no, he's I said annually, every day we go out and check. 
Yeah, I mean, that would be a problem if we had 650 well, a day. I mean, I'm sure if they got that many balls over there. So, <laughs> you know, that's not the case. Well, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not what we're asking here. I mean, we're asking to try to try to find out who we, who we need to go to, to establish a base. You know, there's so many times that we've asked about this and, and pass the buck. If that's what it is, we need to find out, and I think I've got the answer, that it's the trustees that we need to go, go Gen to. Genuinely, I think where you need to go is court. Yeah, civil court. That, yeah. that is how you're going to is, get resolution. I, yeah, and, 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 and with that comment, um, in the court system, you need a basis, right? And your basis of your five or six ordinances are extremely vanilla and plain and with no substance. So that's what we've been trying to tell you that your lack of, of, of uh, substance on the nuisances you have is, is, a, is a weakness for us. So apparently again, as I repeat it, it doesn't sound like the zoning is the institution, it's the trustees to establish some type of basis for a, a situation as you mentioned. And I mean, I, I think to say that there's nothing that you can go on, that there's no basis. I think the fact that you've been injured and there's been, there, there has been mm -hmm. property damage due to it, you have a basis. And you've suffered loss. Mm -hmm. Is it your guess or do you know that the other townships have resolutions or something that they could send the police out if there's excess of lighting excess no i didn't see i or situations I, like I didn't see the resolutions it it that's why i was trying to get to the understanding is apparently the uh, resolutions aren't something that the police can enforce it needs to be it needs to be an ordinance well, we can't do ordinances i understand that i just mentioned i i already I already explained or or, or uh, acknowledged the fact that you guys don't uh you guys don't pass ordinances um, you pass resolutions. Right. So it's, again, it's, it's confusing to me as a, as an individual that knows little about this, that the zoning department would have resolutions that are, I'm not sure why nuisances are, I, why, why you even have five nuisances. So are you, so are, are you basically saying we should remove that section entirely? No, I, I'm asking you for, I, I mean, I'm, I'm stating the fact that um, how your nuisances move forward and, 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 and um, are, are regulated and enforced and adhered to. Um, yeah, that, that's what I'm confused on. So, I, I mean, looking at this, what, what do you, with the nuisances there, how does the how does the zoning department regulate or enforce those? That's a valid point. That's a valid point because if you look at the general regulations throughout, there are very specifics listed, and then you get to section four eight, and it just says the authorization use here and does not authorize it, it, its uh, use in manner that is noxious, dangerous, or offensive by any. Uh, means of odor, dust, et cetera. Basically, please be a good neighbor. There's, there's, yeah. well, there's nothing specific there that can, that can be. Afforded. Is that something that was suggested that the zoning department has nuisance, an area of nuisance? It seems, it seems worthless. When we did the rewrite, I think yeah. it's been there. It's, it's been there since as long as I've been on the. I think it's just okay. been floating around for a long, yeah. long time. And, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like it's something that's a. Uh, insert that's floating around that we're probably confused as far as you keep reading it and we keep asking, but it's there's no substance to it. So, you know, as a as a as an outsider, what what, what kind what's of the purpose of it? Would you expect? I, I mean, clearly the substance would be is how do you act on it? How do you act on the nuisances? Why do you have it in there? Well, so what's the well, purpose now, of mentioning wait a minute, wait a minute. it? That's that's not putting substance in what's written because and no place in this book does it say hey if you don't follow this rule this is what we're going to do to you 
Exactly. Because that's not how this book exists. That's not what this book is for. This book provides guidelines. Right. I am clarifying that the confusion with the zoning department, why you have nuisances and, and how, how, it, how it progresses and how it escalates to the fact that how do you, how do you police it? What the, so, I mean, so we, sh we should just remove the nuisance in general if it's causing confusion is to think that we well, govern. Well, I don't, well, I don't we, think well, we do uh, use this nuisance and I believe we recently used the nuisance to, to clean up a couple of properties. Right. It did we not read any? Yeah, the, well, use that language, Tom. And the other thing, we get complaints of mud on the road and other things, and he's able to go to the builders or developers and talk with them and, you know, to, to, so and point this out to them. And to the best of my knowledge, they all cooperate, maybe slowly, but they do, you know, clean up the mess. So uh, you know, be, I don't know that you want to remove that, unless, especially if you, you know, where you, where you live down problem. there, there's not going to be a lot of any development, probably, well, or where you live, there's no place to have development. So, but, but there are some reasons for it that make sense, but it's not, it's not enforceable in the fact that you know, it's going to cost you X dollars or six months in jail or however you want. And, and that, what our understanding was from the zoning resolution section 12.2, uh, where it says that any violation of the provisions of the zoning resolution or supplements or amendments there too shall constitute a misdemeanor. The owner or tenant of any building structure, premise, or part thereof, or any architect, builder, contractor, agent, or other person who commits, participates in, assists in, or maintains such a violation will be deemed responsible and suffer the penalties provided by law. That's I mean, I made the assumption that there were penalties provided well, by law. And, and the other, the other part you have is we don't have our own attorney. We depend on the on the county, and this is the last thing they want. I've heard them say they just don't want zoning issues. And you, you know, you if some of this you know, another, it's, it's, that's confusing. Um, I'm Julie Mainzer, 1727 Hinkley Hills Road. My whole thing is, I think it needs to stay. Um, I think the uh, projectiles are a huge safety concern. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's something that you guys, yeah. you know, have the ability to discuss. Also, I think it needs to stay as a tool for the BZA to use. So you, I mean, I'm all for adding, maybe cleaning it up a little bit, you know, getting more specific. So they have stuff to protect citizens moving forward. Um, also it is the, the projectiles that we're dealing with. We have an enormous amount and it is a safety issue. And I know some of you guys probably are, are on the social media, the, talk of Hinkley or Hinkley talks, whatever. There was recently um, a resident that was driving down the road and a ball hit right in front of her car, almost hit her car, almost caused an accident. You know what I mean? And that was just a resident. And then I have another example. Um, and I was going to reach out to this lady because she told me she could ever do anything to help. She was a grandmother and had her, I believe at the time, two grandsons. Um, they were cousins, but they were, I think, 11, 12-year-old boys. They went to Buzzard Cove, and they, at that age, were able to hit balls over onto our property. It was a weekend. We had our girls home. Um, they had the cars up to the garage. They were shot vacuuming, and cleaning out, washing and waxing the cars. The ball came over, and they were standing. They had the doors open to the car. It hit the top of the car so within two or three feet of my girls at that time we did have the police come over um you know i have the card with his name and the name of the lady in the in the case that, that it opened but they went over watched these kids hitting the ball over not intentionally but because the nets are not high enough or because the technology of the balls are made to go further higher you know, whatever, and the clubs and stuff now today are made. So the, the safety that that business has is not keeping up with technology. So um, the grandmother came over with the kids. They were devastated. She, she was, she could not believe that they came within a few feet of potentially killing somebody and how that would affect it, those young boys' lives and our lives. Like it would destroy people. And it's a known safety issue. So I don't see the harm in adding it. 
as a nuisance because it's definitely a nuisance. And I wish we could do more, or I wish we could say, hey, you have safety protocol in place from 30 years ago. You have to use balls and clubs from 30 years ago, or if you're gonna use technology of today, you upgrade your safety to meet those standards. Because right now, anybody that comes around that area is at risk. It's that whole corner is a huge safety risk. I think one of the things that um, actually stands to um, strengthen your case is you see what Major League Baseball did with the netting. And they extended it all the way down the first and third base lines because. Absolutely. I, like, I, I totally understand what you guys are saying. I even agree with most of what you're saying. We can't do anything about it. The thing you can do, though, is add it. Mm -hmm. Add it as a nuisance. That's showing support. That's showing you understand that this is a safety okay. concern. Uh, how Cons would you add this? Is just using the word projectiles? Possibly, yes. Define. Or golf, Define just it. staying with golf balls for this situation. You can add golf balls. I mean, it really, what would it hurt? What would it well, hurt to add it? And like I said, even if you can't police it or, or enforce it or whatever, that gives the community more to go on when we want to take it to the next level, when we want to take it to the trustees. Well, it just affects that corner. So I, and anybody driving by. Well, I mean, how many people in our community drive by that corner every time uh, they go I, to the park? If, or I'm sure there's more than, there's a, not, not, not sufficient. There's more outside but, people. But I'm just saying, no, I'm just saying it affects, it's not just us. And it's not just, you know, the neighbor across from us the neighbor down, the neighbor, you know, across from Buzzer Cove. There's several, you know, it's not just the neighbors that are affected. Okay. Um, you know, and I could go back and find the social media post and bring it at the next meeting. I think I can, you know, I could get a hold of this grandmother, see if she'd be willing to come to the um, meeting. But like I said, innocent people, unsuspecting people are at risk. It's just, you know, not to, not to, to 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 continue with this. I mean, I think you, I think we've expressed our concern, and you understand that. It's just the foresight, in our opinion, that as Julie just mentioned, people that come to the activities in that area from out of town, not Hinkley residents, that we need to anticipate or have the foresight that if somebody gets hit by a projectile driving down the road and they have a head on collision and we didn't talk about it or try to do something about it, that would be, that would be pretty devastating. And that stuff has happened. They have been across the road. So that's all I got to say. That's what I wanted to mention. It sounds like the importance is there. Um, again, you know, that's why we came to the meeting is, is to have the opportunity to voice our opinion, to add that to the nuisance um, regulation that you have. I wrote some stuff in up and turned it in at one of the other meetings. So you guys should have that uh, on file. I have it. I have it. I, I think that was last year, wasn't it? Last year we submitted some stuff. Yeah, I have it somewhere and yeah. I have to go back through. Yeah, I have to look at that. You've been after that. You've been at this advocate for twenty five years or so. It's yeah. been a long time. And, um, just, yeah. I'm just, it's been a long time. And Tom, could we go back and look at their nets to see if there's the height? Of course. Sure, I, I plan to do that. Like I said, I hadn't heard any information. But would that be? A, do you want daily calls? Like a, you know. You should just come over and park on the property. No, I'm not, Julie, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm yeah. just saying, you know, since we had them put those nets up, I haven't had a complaint, but that doesn't mean they hadn't happened. Uh, what I would suggest would be, you know, we take this to our legal department and, mm -hmm. and uh, give them the minutes from tonight and talk to them and see what they can do for us. I mean, I guess, it, I, would, I guess I would agree with that. I think that's more yeah. of, a, of, a, of a comment that probably substantiates, you know, our statement is to, to 
I mean, what we're looking for, we're just looking for a little support, some help, some suggestions. So um, well, I that would, that, I I, I'm just, I, I understand it's not that you're going to pay millions of dollars. It's just the mentioning of it to the legal department that it's at least on record and it's, yeah, you so, guys are aware of it. Uh, well, not only that, our legal department helps us draw up yeah. the, the resolution. Well, it's also littering. I mean, they're littering on our property, trespassing our property. And, con and continuously trespassing. You know, Tom. their their stuff that they use to run their business is constantly. And and the, back to what we were saying about the twelve point two. I mean, it's something that we're really trying to understand because when when I see something that says it's going to be a misdemeanor offense, that sounds like it's a criminal thing, not not a civil case. Um, and the yeah, there's I, I, we'd like to have an understanding of what that actually means in the terms of violating, say, section 4.8. Yeah, I wrote that down. Okay, uh, yeah, so if that's something you have to run by the legal, that'd be great. We'd love to hear what, you know, but- well, I'm, I'm, I'm certain if they were getting a ticket every single time a golf ball went over, they'd find a way to stop it. That, yeah. that was my assertion. Well, and the and light- I, I agree with you on that. The, the yeah, light- Yeah, I do too, but- but we don't write that type of ordinance. Right. Is, yeah. This is a town just. So, Tom, if, if you can get the records of that 600 some balls to date, I think that would be very impactful. When yeah, it's legal. If, and if you talk to Brian, I mean, even if he wanted to come to one of our meetings and we could relay to him in a closed session, I don't know, can we go to a closed session? Mm, no. Well, uh, we 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 could have a well, special very, specific thing. Yes, yeah. and that's mm -hmm. yeah, but. To then talk to him and tell him, hey, these are the these are the concerns of the of the residents and right because I think it would follow along twelve point three, you know, would be that process. And I was suggesting we take the minutes from tonight's meeting along to talk. To right, him. it's on YouTube. <laughs> you can watch it if you so fit. But but to also understand not not just the privileged nuisances, but to understand the. The 12.2, what actually it means if it is a misdemeanor, if that is a criminal or a civil thing. I understand your question. Okay. Beautiful. And also, the golf balls go across Bellis as well. I'm we've sure got I a, can't, I can't uh, we've got a couple dozen uh, golf balls uh, across Bellis. So okay. it's not just the nets that aren't functioning, but yeah, the, from the putt putt better. area. Yeah. yeah. I just want to reinforce that with something that not just us, but the other people down yeah. Bellis. Yeah. We can get the numbers for you, the ones that are going across as well. We can email me the numbers of all the numbers. Next week I'll get up there and talk to you. Yeah, and from this year, that way we can establish, you know, they raise the netting and it's still a problem. And then it goes from there. Well, and, and also, like, it, it might have got missed a little bit, but, you know, one of the things we would like to see added in the prohibited nuisances is, is the light. You know, driving down Bellis, you'll get, there's a, a floodlight in the car park that'll blind you approaching a stop sign. So that's a great place to not be able to see. Um, you know, definitely on my driveway. They put this, up about, is this the light in the business? Yeah. Or is it in the park thing? No, no, it's no. the business. They put you're, up you're about Bellis, 10. Right, you live right. up on top of the yes, hill. Yes, on top of the hill. Okay, I want to make sure yes. I can right, right, right. They've got about 10 really tall. I drive that every day. High definition I, I, I always say this. I drive it every day. I'm not blinded by it. Well, I don't know if anyone else is blinded by it, but I am not. Um, I drive it every day <laughs> in the evening as well as during the day. So, so, so which, it's which not, light? It, which it, light? It's, sure it's only within the last month or so. Or when you're coming um, out of your driveway, but when I drive Bellis, yeah. I am not blinded by that light. We own uh, two, uh, 1006 and 1016, which is the five acres to the west. Okay. Um, then there's a little tiny like house not on the, the corner very corner. Lot, but the one behind the corner. Um, so before they put up the lights, well, now that they put up the lights, the the lighting from Buzzard Cove lights up about uh, about 300 feet into the woods. The woods are lit up. You don't need a flashlight. You don't light. need a flashlight. South, you can just up. walk. South of them. Yes. And, yeah. and they turn them off at like 11. And so I kind of, you know, yeah. I don't have a flashlight with me because I wasn't planning on being out that late. And then in, in 
invariably it'll be 1102 or something and then i stumble the last few feet in the woods because i'm silly was, oh, so they do turn them off at certain it was recent. usually this year yeah. Yeah. i would say yeah this year probably within the last they, they've definitely two. been adding lighting well, over there's the past. more going up too because it started with one or two we'd pull out our driveway and we're blinded by pulling out the driveway but then it, it's grown to where i'm actually blinded coming out of our house because it shines through the trees i'm right. sure in the winter it's going to be the whole strip of it. So this wasn't a problem last year to the degree it is now. Correct. It's Correct. Just happened in the course of this year, 2023, yes. basically. Okay. And I'd actually like to point out, you, you said adding lighting. Lighting is already part of it. In nuisance? Yes. Well, under yeah, under 4.8, if we can add lighting. This is odor, dust, smoke, oh, noise, yeah. fumes, or vibration, no, right. wave particle duality no, maybe? Like, vibration, no. it's a light. I guess fits, but <laughs> we're physicists. We'll go with wave particle I'd argue duality. It, but <laughs> directed at. Yeah. Whereas right. This lighting is not directed. It's up. On it, instead of down on the ground, it's it's literally like out, like it's across. It's not down to light up the ground. It's poorly directed, like their like their speakers, speakers are poorly been, directed. They're up to the up the hill. And another another thing that potentially could be added as a list of nuisances would be fireworks, which was another thing that came to Buzzard Co. And it was a nuisance. You said fireworks? Fireworks, yes. I don't know. I think you're gonna be hard pressed to get that one in. I don't know about Probably. that one. <laughs> Everyone in Heat does that. Right. <laughs> well, as a resident versus a business shooting off fireworks next to a park where those trees could have gone up. But it's possible. Thank you. Just a quick question on that. When the fireworks do get approved, do they have, has anybody done any studies to know how, like a commercial firework display, how close it can be to a propane tank? Because it was right where they set it off, it was right by our propane tank. There are regulations. I don't know what they are exactly. Yeah, because we didn't know purposes. what it was because our propane tank sits behind our because garage. It wasn't commercial. And it was right, uh, right in line with that. I don't know how many feet out, but it was right in line. I just thought of that app, you know, as they were setting up. Well, but I knew it was approved, so I didn't know. What the same one of the reasons that we thought to mention fireworks is because there is a difference between a, a consumer firework and a commercial one. A commercial show, if, if I as a business hire a professional to come in and do it, there's a lot of regulations in ORC around, like you're saying, how close it can be and you know how far away people have to be. There's a lot of regulations. As a consumer who goes out and plops a grand down at the fireworks store and puts it in the back of my truck and brings it over to my business, but it's still a consumer firework, uh, our understanding was that the ORC regulations around commercial firework shows did not apply to that because, and, and that was what we were told, um, it was consumer grade fireworks. And so there are some limitations. You can't have a drunk 15 year old setting them off, um, but that seems obvious. Uh, and, and other than that, there were no controls. And, and that was why we were saying you know, if fireworks were prohibited on, you know, consumer fireworks prohibited on business properties so that if I'm a business, I need to hire a professional who really knows what they're doing and they've got insurance in case they burn something down. Now, I know technically you're supposed to have all that if you're commercial going out, there are regulations, but not the time, and I don't know who regulates that. In, in the consumer fireworks uh, thing that they just added, it specifically said that anything that's been purchased under this is not a commercial there, 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 there stanza in that section that specifically exempts fireworks purchased under the consumer fireworks ORC from the regulations of commercial displays. That's in the so ORC. Regulates, yeah. what, what section is that? I do not know because this was that, something that, we were worried about in July, and I have a short attention span. But we, okay. we do have it at home. We can email it along. Well, if it's a business putting on a display, advertising it to bring in business, they should fall under something. I think there is an organization that may regulate that. We should probably find out who that is. Before because the ORC, we, we are throwing a lot of ORC verbiage around here, but really the ORC is regulated in, in a civil court. It's not done. But I think that's where we're having the disconnect, maybe, is 
we don't we we can write it and what she's saying is well give them something to go on you know but we don't we can't enforce it we can't enforce ORC that's what they're they think that's what we're missing the I can't enforce them. I can't supersede other sections of the ORC. Correct. And, and that's, that's, I think that's the frustrating part of this conversation right. yeah. is because you hear, you hear what's being said here. And then you look at section 519 and you look and you can see the things that, that we can enforce and we have limitations. The most frustrating part is this is ongoing, ongoing. And you're here today, you stand up and this has been ongoing for how many years? And you still, it's not clear who is, who can help you. And I, I like the idea, Mr. Wilson, of, of taking tonight's minutes, going to the prosecutor and saying, hey, can you give us some guidance on this? If there's something this commission can do, I think we'd be happy to, to entertain it. Right. But from our understanding, we're very, we're, we're limited. Mm -hmm. Well, right. now that it's on record, I mean, I think everybody can understand the extreme safety issue. Yeah. Well, I, I think, is, Julie, I think you sent us pictures last year. You were in a sling or someone had a cast yeah, on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's vehicles that have been damaged. Yeah. I mean, multiple hits in, on each vehicle. I mean, yeah. it's just, and we try to minimize that by parking across the street. You know, we're a family of six. We've got a lot of cars. I mean, yep. You know what I mean? We're not the average two car, or whatever. You yep. know what I mean? We've got kids that drive that mm -hmm. you know, have cars. So we try to park across the street. Um, we had a car get hit even parked across the street. So, I, I mean, we know, and the neighbor knows, you know, they have golf balls. You know, I've taken pictures of them. They got hit into the ditch because they make a dent in the side of the ditch. You know, you just see them all over the place. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, personal injury, property damage, plus, like I said, just even a, a person, a citizen, you know, resident of Hinkley that posted it on social media that her car was almost hit. I have, a, I've said, have you approached small claims court? That's very inexpensive with the things and file a claim. I mean, I've used small claim courts. I, I think it's up to two hundred fifty dollars now. Yeah, but, yeah and, and, the file, and, and but not to it was pretty easy. Delay that meeting, but that um, yes, we've already pursued that, um, and it goes to the point where you guys made a comment: is how many times do you find them a five dollars for every ball? So you got a thousand balls. You know, that's where the thing is: is that's where we're constantly in small claims court. Right. So so every time we document a damage and we turn it in and they play their sophisticated little game and they give it to their attorney and they don't call us back. And then, you know, we've got to you know, play, play catch up and then they'll give us some jackrabbit excuse um, that we need to we need to talk to their attorney and he never answers. So we have gotten the runaround. So, again, not to not to keep going, but that's i feel comfortable that at least i got the comfort feeling that you you've recognized you know after all these years hopefully whatever help you can give us that's i think what we're asking and you know again small claims court is you know something that hey when does it stop and we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be in there all the time but in any case i appreciate whatever help you can give us Thank you. Thank you for your comments. So what I think we're at is um, we're going to take a look at the, the nuisance language again. Um, see if we need to add projectiles or anything with lighting um, and talk about it probably maybe again next week in our next month when our mm -hmm. is back here. And Tom, I think it's a great idea to take the minutes, the concerns here to the uh, prosecutor's office and see what they have or or what we can do, if anything. Well, they, they, I'm sure they're going to know from other townships and stuff what, what's possible to do and Correct. molest them for suggestions. Mm -hmm. And that's that's basically all we can do right now. So I'm happy to help out there. 
Is it possible to get any input from planning services on, on this particular section? More guidance of if, if we extend it, is there really need behind this section? And if there's there's guidance on you know any guidance they, they could give us as well, I'm just kind of curious. I don't know. We can ask. I mean, I, Marcus is the one who makes those connections. We can certainly bring that point up and see if it can be done or if there is any. Well, just it's it's more just to find out like what what yeah. what are the limits? What what can we do? What can't we do? What's the swim lane that we're in here and. I'm not sure if the planning commission is the one to, to help us with that, but. They've in the past given us all kinds of guidance. Uh, with language. With language. That, right. And that, that's, okay. that's um, yeah. um, it's the more language. of a. Planning department. Right. Not, not more of a property. Like, yeah. Right. I'm not asking them to write anything. It's it's more of like. Can you point us in the direction of verbiage that is worked. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. hey, I, I, I don't know if. if there's things that we can do and other townships have done it. I just, as long as I've been on this commission, we've been very limited. Yep. That's a good point, we can try. Another consideration for the complainants is, I mean, if, if it's ongoing and you keep trying to get it remediated, I mean, you can at some point just call it harassment and actually bring a suit against them. Okay, let's move on then. The next, uh, the chairman's report, which I really don't have anything to report with, um, Mark is not here. Um, the next zoning commission meeting is scheduled for October 5, 2023. Does anyone else have anything that they would like to report out? Are you gonna be discussing this again? A nuisance again at that meeting? I think I think we can. Um, I'm going to talk to Marcus. I'm not sure how far we'll get with uh, we'll with our legal because yeah. I don't know how the process. So it'll Mar be posted if you're going to talk. Correct. Marcus isn't here. He has more of those contacts and, and he would know the timeline. But my my gut is yeah, we'd like to have it. Um, to, to discuss further if need be, and maybe then we'll have some guidance. <clears throat> Anything from the floor? So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Salman and seconded by Marzullo. Very good. Then all in favor? Aye. Aye. 8.38. Okay. She's closed at 8.40. She was not on the book. She's on the BCA. She's been in here. It's more than that. And the book. The stuff is not talked about here. She's on the book. That's why they have a hard on for this thing. 